Disclaimer, I am super excited for today's unboxing. It is British. Well, at least it represents something British. And I promise you, I won't be biased. I won't be doing anything in the video to make you think I'm British or overly British. You will see nothing in this video other than the product itself. Just a normal video. Right, let's do this. No, sorry, I couldn't help myself. No, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Oh, okay, I know, bit too much. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> People, this is the British L85 A2. Made in Taiwan. <laughs> yes, people, I know it's been a long time in coming. Many people have seen my airsoft uh, gun wall and they have seen this baby, the Army Armament L85A1. I have had this thing for years, but you know what? It has never worked properly from day one. I know some of you are saying, yep, yeah, just like the real steel, Shh, cheeky. Anyway, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have seen this on my gun wall over the years but again i've never unboxed it and you've been asking this for ages well now you know why however this one is an aeg from army armament but today's one is from WeTech. and best of all it's a gas blowback let's get it open Now, these came out years ago and they've been out of stock even longer. This is a new batch. Please, WeTech, have you ironed out some of the issues these used to have. Namely, the bolt system. Oh, this looks the business. I mean, typical WeTech, very minimalistic packaging, but what more do you need? Have a look. So as you can see, it's strapped down very nicely. Um, we tech really do things differently <laughs> to other manufacturers. No foam. No, nothing. Okay, so the first thing we have is a speed loader, a tiny little Allen key, and you also get a full metal 30 round gas mag. And now for the main attraction itself. Oh, let's cut this without causing any damage. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh. This baby is heavy! But wait, we also get a WeTech instruction manual for the L85. Nice! Yeah, right, let's do this again. <laughs> oh, the weight of this! Wow! Let's just uh, unwrap this. Okay, it's from that end. This has been a long time incoming people. Would you look at this? Ho, ho, ho. Do you know what? This is one of these times where I can say I've actually held and field stripped the real version of this. So yeah, pretty excited about this and how very authentic this looks. Now I'm quite eager to make sure that this works. So for the first time ever, before I go through all the features, I'm just gonna get it ready and uh, do a test shot, okay? Just to make sure everything is okay. But I did buy something else for this. Yes, I got a Susat. But 
There's no guarantee it's even going to fit properly on there. So we'll see, but look, very nice looking. So because I want to get it up and running fairly quickly, let me go straight to the mag and show you that it is, as I said, a full metal 30 round mag. And yes, it takes gas. And right here is a switch that you can change so that this bad boy locks open after the last round has been spent. Or you can disable that. Got some BBs in the speed loader. I'm not gonna put too many in here for the first time. I'm gonna load it up. I have heard nothing but horror stories about this particular model. Here's hoping for the best. Oh, that's snappy. So far, so good. Nice. Locks open, as you can see, just like its real counterpart. But what about full auto? And let me just show you quickly, the mag is empty. Hence, the lock back. Okay, got a few more rounds in there, only about 10. We're gonna go full auto and let's see how it copes. Again, <laughs> here's hoping for the best. Woo! This thing is sweet. And so far, again, so good. No issues yet. However, this bad boy is brand new out of the box. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna tell you right now all the issues I have heard about this particular model. And then we'll go through all of the features Marvellous features, I love it. I don't care what anyone says about the real version. Uh, I've heard people mock it. Um, <laughs> as I said, I've held, I've fired, I've fill stripped the real thing. I don't wanna go too much into my life history, but it's all above board. You can work it out for yourselves. Anyway, Royal Engine. I'm gonna go through all of the features and then later on, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm gonna have upgraded in this so that I know it will work for me flawlessly. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to are the two differences between the Airsoft L85A2 and the older L85A1. Do remember though, internally they're gonna be completely different. AEG gas blowback. So in my hand, as I said, is the L85A1 SA80. Take a look at the hand guard, how that's been designed even these ports here um, and then look at that one so this is the l85a2 let me drop into the picture the l85a1 you can see the differences there and then as we move towards the trigger and the grip area take a look the grip pretty much identical but you can see the actual triggers themselves again identical but different colors but let me get into what I believe is more of an important change between the L85A2 and the L85A1. Take a look at the mag release. Can you see how the actual mag release has like a shroud, a cover around it? So you don't accidentally, say for example, if you were to drop it or bang against it with your webbing or whatever you're wearing or even just your body, you're not gonna accidentally release your mag anytime soon with this added extra piece right there. And if you look at the L85A1, you don't have that feature. You can see how exposed the mag release is. Now, continuing with the comparisons between these two Airsoft models and their representations of the real thing, take a look at the fire selector switch on the A2. Notice how much bigger and bulkier that fire selector switch is compared to the A1. Another difference I would like to point out on these two different Airsoft models, look at the cheek rest on the A2 compared to the A1. Notice how the design on the cheek rest is different. Look, it goes around, goes forward and then drops. Whereas on the A2 just goes around and drops. Now again, I must stress, I'm doing the differences between these two Airsoft models purely because one, this one has become very historical in terms of Airsoft because Good luck in trying to get an army armament L85A1. They don't make them anymore. 
even though this has given me no end of trouble and malfunctions, I love this baby. And it's a very nice, pretty accurate looking representation of its real counterpart. And in terms of availability, I literally thought the L85A2 was going the same way from WeTech, the gas version. They became impossible to find. And then out of the blue, they released another batch. Now I'm hoping this is the improved version in terms of the bolt. We will have a look at that. I am going to do a part two of this video where I strip this bad boy down and do some upgrades. Now quickly going back to some of the differences, let me bring you back to the handguard on both of these models. Look at the L85A2 especially around there. Now look in there, you're probably thinking, is that bent under there? That metal piece just there under that cover? Well, no. Look at the original L85A1. You will see that same angled piece right there. It's just that it's not covered by the cover. Whereas on the L85A2, it is. Now, if you were to go ahead and Google the A2 version, more often than not, you won't see this on there. You will see a rail system, the Daniel Defense rail system. And believe it or not, because of all the issues and stuff that they had with the L85 platform, they got the Germans involved. Okay, so yes, HK, yeah, they got involved in doing some upgrades to this beauty of an SA80. Now I say Germans, if you didn't know this already, this may shock you. Heckler und Koch was once owned by the Brits. Yes, Britain, as in Royal Ordnance, part of the British Aerospace, now BAE Systems, but the Germans got it back again. <laughs> Flipping it around to this side, you can immediately see some major differences. The first being the cocking handles right there. Yes, cocking handles is what they were referred to as. On the L85A2, you can see you have a much bigger, more luxurious <laughs> cocking handle, which served a good purpose because when your spent rounds come flying out of the ejection port, this would help to deflect them away. Whereas on the original L85A1, you've got a more traditional style cocking handle. Let me just uh, release the dust cover, just to see if there's any major differences yet. Yeah. If you look here on the L85A1, look on the inside of that dust cover, especially keep an eye here when I show you the L85A2. You can see the redesign right there. Now, I'm sure you can spot one or two other differences on this side, but I'm quite eager to get to the rail systems. I'm not too bothered about the army armament because I'm not going to put a SUSAT on that, but I am on the WeTech version. Ah, oh, you have no idea how happy I am. Look at that bad boy. And don't worry, the front sight will be coming off, but I'm going to leave it on for now. It will be coming off in part two. I just wanted to make sure that this SUSAT would fit. And it does. This fits absolutely perfectly. Now again, I don't know if it's because this is a more updated version of the Wii, WeTech L85A2. It is snug. I'm really happy about that. And remember, there will be a part two where I open this bad boy up, double check to see if it is the updated version and see what parts I may still possibly need to upgrade. I know for sure I will be getting an MPAS. Uh, if you're not sure what an MPAS is, that's where you can adjust your FPS, your velocity. Now, of course, it does have its own sight system, which can be adjusted here on the front post. Now, if I bring you back to the carry handle that I have already removed, in fact, let me show you the one on the uh, L85A1 because it's the same principle. You can see how that can be adjusted for your large peephole and you can change that sight picture for a smaller one. And of course, you can adjust your windage. Oh, and by the way, right in there, once you've pulled your bolt back, right there is where you adjust your hop up. Remember that little Allen key I showed you? Well, yep, that's what that's for. So this will be a good time to show you some of the functions, the features, which replicate the real thing very nicely. Um, one or two things don't, but anyway, at this present moment in time, the bolt is open and you would press down on that 
to release your bolt. Right now, let me uh, release that mag. Okay, so one of the complaints of the original model is that your bolt lock didn't really work. Now, I've got a feeling that hasn't changed. They may have upgraded, or should I say, updated other features internally on this, but let's see. So on the real version, when I pull back the charging handle, the dust cover opens, and I should be able to push this down and lock open the bolt. Not on this version. But you can cheat and shove your finger up the mag well. But that's in part two. Let's try it the other way, just in case, the incorrect way, like pulling this up. Nope. Let's try it the correct way, pushing it down. No, it's not happening. I can feel it's not happening. No. And to be fair, you should be able to tell whether this was going to work or not. That should really go all the way back into there and then you should be able to lock it in place. And the fact that this doesn't even go back that far is your first clue. Gotta say though, even though it wasn't the A2 that I handled, it was the A1, loving the A2's deflector. It literally deflects the round out of the way. And right here on this side, you have your safety. So right now it's in safe. So if I pull that trigger, it is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. You can now pull the trigger. Now on this side, you have your mag release, as I showed earlier, your bolt release. Here's your select fire. R for repetition, which is semi-auto. And of course, A for full auto. Here you have your rear sling point, your very nice rubberized and texturized butt plate. Now this entire body right here is made out of metal, very similar to its real counterpart. Um, as I said, your butt plate rubberized, your cheek pad or cheek rest, your grip, your hand guard, the cover, that's all some sort of nylon fiber, really strong, um, polymer really does remind me of the real thing. Here look, have a look through this Airsoft Susat. How cool is that? Almost looks like how a real Susat should look when you look through one. Ha, a lot of Airsoft ones don't really do this, so this is pretty neat. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go for an accuracy test now. I will be doing a chrono test in part two once I have the end pass fitted. Despite the kick, I am liking what I'm seeing here. Again, I wasn't a million miles away, but still, compare this to all the other um, accuracy tests I have done from the same distance. Look at that. Now, I took five shots because I couldn't believe my first shot landed all the way up there. I literally wasn't looking through the sight correctly. I adjusted myself composed myself and then we got a nice grouping right there now moving along would you look at that Perfect. as you can see there the shot landed there but it absolutely tore into the center then you got another shot just above there and these two shots just there do you know what very nice and tight considering the size of this circle right there it's only about three to three and a half inches. So you can imagine these shots there are what? About an inch or so apart? Pretty decent. And then we get to here, would you look at that? Absolutely surrounding the enemy, which is the X. <laughs> very tight groupings. I'm very impressed. So there you go, people. That pretty much wraps up part one for the WeTech L85A2 Gas Blow Bag, SA80. Now, as I mentioned before, part two will have me stripping this bad boy down, seeing, if any, 
updates that WeTech have done to this because of the amount of complaints <laughs> there were about the first version of this, especially to do with that bolt, big old heavy bolt going back and forth. It was just destroying itself internally. I'm fully aware of that little mod where you can put a couple of washers on the uh, guide rods as it were, but since then, apparently, WeTech has put some sort of reinforcement in there. We'll check all of that out in part two, and I'll be putting the end pass in, and maybe other upgrades too, for sure. Thanks for watching. Catch me next time on the Airsoft Mike YouTube channel. Oh, I know I still have to do my scars, okay? My scar H uh, upgrades and uh, follow up video. Um, but that has to be later on this year. This WeTech one, I'm gonna do that very soon. Trust me.